If you're looking to target a niche on Google and you just don't know what the perfect keyword is, today I'm going to be showing you how to do a keyword audit on your website as well as create a keyword plan for a brand new website. So I just got done making the presentation, it's right over there. I'm going to add this video to, that, to it, upload it, and hopefully you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions, and by the way, this is part one of the program that I've created called How to Make a Full-Time Income Doing SEO Audits. There's going to be seven other parts to it. You get a paid template, you get a bunch of cool stuff. I really recommend check out the other video after this one showing you how I make a full-time income. And if you're interested, you can get the pre-sale. It's only $2.97 for this limited time. Check it out and enjoy. All right, what's up there, guys? Welcome back. Today we are going to be covering the first part of the How to Make a Full-Time Income with SEO Audits program. And today we're going to be talking about starting out with a keyword audit. We're going to be talking about how to research a niche with high profitability and low competition, as well as high commercial value. So when you're creating a website, you want to figure out obviously what you want to target and really it's very important to figure out what you need to niche down to first so if you don't really know what keywords to target your direction of your website's going to suffer so today we're going to be quickly covering how to figure out the direction of your website by choosing a niche and scaling up from something very specific to something more general. So first of all, why do you want to niche down? And the answer is if you compete with everybody, you become a nobody. You want to choose one thing at a time that you can become well known for. And before we continue diving into this, it's advisable that you have the tool Ahrefs. If you don't, it's not necessary. You can still continue this program without having this tool, but I would recommend if you have the money to get it. So you have two options. You can, one, start by picking a niche that you know the most about, or two, you can pick a niche that you'll have to learn about. And ideally, when you pick a niche, you wanna pick the one that you know about because it's going to be easier for you to figure out what you want to target and how to create a marketing strategy around it. For instance, I know for the people who want to get SEO audits, they are looking for a very specific type of content. And the reason why I know that is because I know the niche well. If I were to go into, let's say, SEO for mattress review websites, I probably wouldn't know the layout as well. However, I have been in that niche. I wound up ranking somebody from, you know, they had zero organic traffic or about five visits a month to 20,000, 30,000 visits a month now. But it took me a while to figure out that layout. And if I would have just niched down to one thing at a time, it would have been a lot easier for me to create a strategy that would work over and over and over for multiple clients rather than working with everybody just because I wanted to make money. So again, I know more about SEO audits than anything else. Uh, hence, all of my topic research is around SEO audits. So if you look at a lot of my videos these days, it's around SEO audit training, how to do keyword research SEO audits, how to do content SEO audits, how to do SEO audit, uh, just everything around SEO audits. And the reason why I pick a lot of these topics is because I'll go and I'll, I'll use some of the methods that I'm about to show you to research these topics and then rank for them. So if you haven't specialized in anything specifically in your field, then you'll want to find the most general topic and then focus your research there. So some people might be saying, well, Chase, it's easy for you to say, you uh, already have been doing audits for so long, how are you going to tell me that I need to uh, 
specialize in something if I don't really specialize in anything. So ideally what you're going to do is you're going to pick something that you either like or something that you somewhat know about in the most general things. So like, let me show you an example. Um, let's say I only knew about local SEO, but I didn't know about SEO audits, right? I would then want to dive in a little bit deeper and think about what success I've been able to produce the most in this field. So like if I, let's say I've worked with an iPhone repair site, I've worked with a computer repair site, let's say I worked with an acupuncturist, I'm gonna to wanna to pick the thing that I had the most success with. Because usually the thing that you have the most success with is the thing that you're gonna most easily be able to replicate and be able to market. A lot of uh, the things that you're gonna be able to market, the reason why you're gonna be able to market them well is because you have results previously. It's like almost going into a gym and trying to hire somebody that doesn't look fit as a trainer. You want somebody who already has results to train you. And it's the same thing with people who you're going to be selling your marketing to, which is what SEO is at the end of the day. You're selling marketing. Uh, SEO is a form of marketing. And if you haven't been able to produce results, then it doesn't really make sense for them to buy from you. So I was able to rank an iPhone repair company locally on Google, as a lot of you guys know. I, I said this in my very first video uh, explaining um, how to do an SEO audit. And so my more specific targeting would probably be something around iPhone repair SEO or SEO for local tech companies if I wanted to go more general. You generally want to go as specific as you can when you start out, like let's say only iPhone repair SEO or iPhone repair marketing, iPhone repair lead gen, that kind of thing. And then once you start getting success there, then you would start going for something a little bit more general like local tech companies or you start going into other air, uh, other topics like computer repair and something that's not going to be uh, what you've already hopefully dominated with, which is iPhone repair SEO or iPhone repair audits, that kind of thing. So you don't need to stick with your hyper specific niche forever, just long enough to produce revenue. So let's say you stuck with iPhone repair SEO, you started creating all this content around that, you created an architecture that people could look at and they go, oh, well, the homepage is about iPhone repair SEO and the, all the different services and all the case studies. And you want to really be known well for that one thing so that when somebody who you're targeting looks at it, they go, wow, these people really know a lot about that topic. They have a lot of content. They have a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, uh, sales, services, all that stuff around that topic. Now, once you start making money, with what we're about, we're going to be continuing with in the next videos, which is how to create a website that actually sells. That's when you're going to want to start going to something more general. So once money comes in, you can target more general terms because you'll have results and transparency sells. Results create transparency. And what that means is if you have five websites that are doing really well with iPhone repair and you can show the websites, you can list the contact information for the owners, that kind of stuff. The people who are going to want to buy from you are going to see that you're a transparent company that has results, that is making money for their clients, for your clients. If you've never produced results and you don't really know anything about any niche, then you'll need to pick one that you think you'll do well in. So let's say, for instance, you don't know anything about any niche. You're just like kind of out there and you're like, well, I just kind of learned about this SEO thing. I don't really know about really anything except maybe just memes. And you just want to pick something. Then the way you do that is you do two things. You Step one, you choose something you think you'd like. And step two, you start researching low keyword difficulty keywords with high search rates and high uh, CPC values. Now you can't really look for low keyword difficulty within Google Keyword Planner, which is what I'm going to show you first. You can in Ahrefs, which I'm going to show you second. So if you can't find anything with uh, low keyword difficulty because you don't have that metric within um, a free tool like Google Keyword Planner, then you're really just going to look for things with high search rates and high com uh, commercial or cost per click values. And the reason why you do this is because Generally, if there's a high search rate and a high commercial value, generally means that the keyword that you're looking at is, is valuable because people are willing to pay for it. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to start by visiting this link. Um, I will leave that in the description of this video, but it's a link that you can click on and check out the full list of different Google My Business categories. And there are literally thousands of categories that you can choose from. So like I chose for my example, just like a dog trainer. I scrolled down for like 40 seconds until I found it. And I don't know why I chose it. I was just like, okay, well, we'll just take dog trainers. And what you're going to do is um, you're going to take the word dog trainers and you're going to plug in different keywords like lead gen, SEO, marketing, um, etc. into the discover new keywords box on Google Keyword Planner. And what you'll end up getting is something that looks like this. So you'll have the search rate, which you can see dog training marketing was the first one I put in there. It says 10 to 100 monthly searches and the CPC value is about 183 to 497. Now I get all these different related broad keywords. And if the search rate that you're looking for isn't broad enough, then you're going to click on these. So dog training marketing doesn't really give you a high search rate. If that's your most general keyword that you're trying to target, then you probably want to target something a little bit more general or different because if the best keyword you're going for only has 10 to 100 searches per month, it's probably not worth it. Uh, starting out, you should be, your ge most general keyword should usually be about 1,000 to 2,000 searches per month. To give you an example with the authority I have, my SEO audits keyword, which is the main keyword I'm going for, has about a 60 keyword difficulty and like, I think it's like 4,000 searches a month just for the one variation. So the harder the keyword, generally the higher search, the higher commercial value. Now the main keyword you choose should be the most general term you want to target. If you find a keyword that has a high search rate, and you can find longer tail variations of the uh, of it to target. Um, then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna target that keyword with uh, topical silos, basically. And what that means is, if you have your main keyword being dog training marketing, and let's say that has a thousand searches per month, and then you find all these other related keywords around it, like dog training SEO and dog training. Uh, certifications and, and things that pe that dog trainers are going to be looking up not the you don't want you don't want traffic for dog training because that's what you're going to be trying to rank your clients for you want traffic for what the dog trainer is going to be looking for in terms of what they need help with so it doesn't just have to be around marketing it could be around things that they just generally need help with like Maybe they're asking questions about certain things. Now, when finding long tail keyword variations, Ahrefs really comes in handy because unfortunately, these broad keywords don't give you a whole lot of ideas. With Ahrefs, you can actually download all of your competitors' keywords extremely easily. And let me just show you, for example, if I type in dog training marketing, I can find a ton of keyword ideas from competitors who are ranking on Google. So this is all of the people who are ranking for dog training marketing. And here's what their top keywords are that they're ranking for for their pages. So these are all the pages that are ranking. And then if you look to the right, you can see this page has 19 keywords it's ranking for. And here's one of the keywords, dog training ads. Uh, this one is has sorry 40 keywords it's ranking for. The top keyword it's ranking for is dog training business. So all of these things are, are are generally things that people are looking for help with that are dog trainers. So like pet business marketing. Now it's up to you to decide whether or not this is something you want to go for based on the amount of searches you would get ranking as a whole, meaning that you're going to be bringing in a silo of content. You're going to be trying to rank for the entire topic as a whole around dog training, dog training marketing, dog training ads, dog training, uh, pet business marketing. 
you if that's your theme, then you would start identifying all of these different keywords. Now what you can do is you can actually click on the drop down arrow on Ahrefs next to the site and then you can click on organic keywords. And what that'll do is it'll just show you for that exact page all of the long tail variations that that page is ranking for. And this actually helps really well when you start doing content audits, which is what we're going to be covering as well in this program. So you can see here dog training ads, dog training ideas, dog training websites, um, dog training business, DIY dog training platform. So not all of this is going to be stuff that business owners are going to be searching for. This is going to be some stuff that people who are looking for the service are searching for as well. But it's up to you to identify the things that business owners are going to be searching for. And usually it's the things with uh, high commercial values like dog training websites, maybe not, let's see, um, dog training business 2.50. Again, it, this is why it's so important to learn about the niche because it's easier to know what the customer of your niche is searching for by dealing with that customer. I know easily if I were to start looking at SEO audits and using this exact strategy, what the perfect keywords would be for me because I know the type of per people who are searching for audits. So these are mostly all keywords that dog trainers are looking up. Dog trainers who probably need marketing. Once you choose your niche and your keywords to start targeting, you need to build an architecture that sells. And again, the way you build architectures is by creating your website that is specifically targeting the business owner that you want to work with. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about building your website and building your sales funnel. So it's a pretty quick video. It's only about 16 minutes total, but at least maybe now you have an idea on how to start looking at niches that would be profitable for you by niching down and spending time working on an architecture and a silo of content around something that you can really spend time creating value with rather than spending time trying to rank for everything that's not going to work. And it has, it, this is really important once you start getting into more advanced audit techniques and you start looking at architectures of websites that have content around everything and they really just need to consolidate what they do best and make a bunch of money that way. So if you have any questions uh, and you're in the Teachable platform, make sure you leave a comment and I will try to get back to it as soon as possible. Alternatively, if you have any other further questions, my email, as you, most of you know, is just I'm at chasereiner.com. And that's it for today. We'll see you in the next part of the program. And again, thanks for signing up for the program, and I appreciate your support. See you soon.